World of Tanks is one of the hardest games for new players to get good at. That is a statement. It's not an opinion. I would be willing to say World of Tanks is one of the hardest games ever created for newer players or even skilled players to do well at. Sometimes you'll see incredibly skilled players that average 4k plus in tier 10 that get obliterated by a 405 or they'll get hit by an arty and it'll pen them. And sometimes there's just nothing you can do about that. World of Tanks is a heavily RNG dependent game. And it's not only RNG dependent, but it is team based. You have 14 other players on your team. And if those 14 other players don't know what they're doing, the chances of winning are drastically decreased. And that's just as simple as it gets. So we are going to make our way over towards the 1-2 line on Lakeville. Now Lakeville is a map that has two distinct places you can go. You can make your way over to the 8-9 line if you're in a tank like an IS-3. Or you can make your way over to the 1-2 line if you're in a haul down vehicle. And it showcases the massive difference in playstyle. If you're driving a vehicle that is hauled down, especially something like I'm in the 56 TP, that only has armor on the turret and haul when using its gun depression, then you should obviously be going towards a haul down position. This is something you see a lot of people making mistakes on when they play World of Tanks. You will see people driving tanks that don't have a lot of gun depression. For example, there is a KV-4 on the enemy team. Why would you drive a KV-4 to the side of the map? A KV-4 is a vehicle that you should be driving over towards town. You should be using it side scraping and it's going to do a much better job. But obviously the rest of their tanks over here can do an okay job. But again the Tiger 2 I also wouldn't really drive over towards the side of the map. The Tiger 2 is not a vehicle that features a lot of gun depression and it's especially not a tank that has great turn armor when hauled down because it doesn't have much haul down capabilities. What you want to do is you want to drive vehicles like the Type 63, 56 TP over towards this side of the map because you're able to work haul down. Now we can see that there's an SMV Contra Caro 67 in front of me and that vehicle has absolutely stupid armor. In fact to show you just how stupid the armor is on that vehicle let me pause the replay really quick. This is the armor on an SMV haul down against 300 mils of heat pen. Now my tank the 56 TP has about eh, like 270 mils of pen APCR. It's not nearly as good as 300 mils of heat. Look at the turret. 330. At weakest, it's 318, 400 mils. There's no hatch. I mean, there is a hatch. You can see it right here. But the chances of hitting that weak spot are literally almost 0%. So, yeah, penning this vehicle hull down is almost literally impossible. There's only one weak spot, and it's still about 290 to 300 mils thick. Essentially, that means that I'm never, ever, ever going to cut through this vehicle hull down unless I get the lower plate in my vehicle. Now, to be honest, I thought it had a hatch but yeah it, it actually doesn't wargaming in my opinion is really stupid on the balance of the contra caros i don't know how they thought giving these vehicles ridiculous haul down capabilities with literally no weak spots was a fair and balanced idea because that tank literally locks down that entire spot of the map now and as you can see i'm not even bothering to fight it as of right now we're gonna aim it on the uh, type 63 I'm going to get a nice 424 damage shot. The only problem is my vehicle is no longer hauled down in a position like this. But yeah, it's it's rather irritating to fight Contra Caros, Minnows, or really anything of the Italian TDs hauled down. But thankfully, we have good gun handling stats on this vehicle because I am running V-Stabs. I'm also running improved rotation mechanism. And I think it's improved hardening. So I've got all the on-movement dispersion possible on this tank, which is obviously making our gun quite accurate on the move. And because this vehicle has good base dispersion values, it's actually not too bad. So we got the Tiger 2, we got the T32, and you can see the T32, even with our premium rounds, is completely red in the turret. It's one of the hardest tanks to pen. I shoot out the upper plate of the Tiger 2. I didn't really expect it to pen, but I was kind of hoping I might high roll it and it would cut through but not too much of a problem. We're up to 1,600 damage as it is, and we've only bled about 300 health. We got the KV-4. I'm making sure that I'm only showing my turret, and this is a great example of why you don't drive the KV-4 to the side of the map. The vehicle has literally no gun depression, and it also, while has very good pen, it's just not going to cut through my vehicle. It doesn't have that capability. So we're already up to 2,000 damage now at this point. I'm going to see if I can move up here. The SMV looks like he's backing off. Possibly he's dumped his clip. We're just going to chill here. And now, here comes the mistakes from me. And this is why knowledge is super important. Whenever I fight a tank that I don't fully understand the armor profile of, the moment I am done with that battle, or even sometimes while I'm waiting for my reload in game, I will go take a look at the vehicle's armor profile. I always leave tanks GGG tanks GG up 
in the background while I'm playing. And I can just very easily click off game for about half a second, pull up the vehicle I'm fighting, and see the weak spots while I'm playing. It's something I always actually recommend people to do if you have the opportunity to. You know, if you're in an autoloader and you've got 30 seconds before you're reloaded, it's never a bad idea to just look at a vehicle's weak spots. Because look at that. I'm shooting at the Contra Caro's hatch. Or at least that's what it shows on the armor profile. But clearly none of those shells are penning because apparently that's not actually a weak spot. But you wouldn't know that unless you look at the armor profile. I've decided at this point that I'm not going to pen his vehicle hull down. So I'm just going to shoot the T-32. We have 5 premium shells left and 14 AP. That's one downside of this tank. It really doesn't hold a lot of ammo. We're going to aim it on the Tiger 2 in just a moment here. And easy shot right into his track wheel. Nice. We got a 382 shot. Okay, we're up to 2,700 damage. You can see I've been able to conserve my health. Even though we haven't been able to pen the enemy Contra Caro, I've made sure that he's also not able to pen us. And as long as I'm not risking losing my health, we're in a fairly fine situation. So again, at this point, I know that I can't poke the KV-4 or any of these guys over here. But what I can do is just expose my entire tank to trade with the Contra Caro. I know that I have more alpha damage than his vehicle. So I can easily trade, and I've also got a lot more health. So he's got 483 left, and I've got still 927. And because of that, we can see that the Contra Caro no longer really wants to fight me. I'm holding the spot quite well. Again, though, there's not much I can do to his vehicle. So we're going to aim it on the T-28. I'm going to swap my shelf intuition to AP. We're going to aim it right on his hatch. But unfortunately, even with my boosted accuracy, it still misses by about half a mile and uh, does not go where I want it to. So we're going to reload again. My Type 63, like a doofus, drives up, gets cleared. Obviously that guy wasn't the most skilled, but oh well. T-32, I can't do anything to, so we're going to aim it on the T-28, but unfortunately again, the shell misses by another mile and is not able to hit him. So this is where we're just slinging shells, and there's just not much I can do. I mean... I'm hoping that we can get some shots out. We got the SMV pushing up on us. Again, there's just nothing I can do to his tank. It looks like that's a hatch, but I, I guess that just really isn't a weak spot. So we're just going to ignore that. We're going to wait for the T-28. There you go. Aiming it on the roof of the T-28 again. But, oh, man, just every shell is not hitting that hatch. At least that one hit the T-28, but it's obviously not doing what I want it to. So we reload. We got the SMV, who is... Uh, Still just kind of chilling there. And at this point, again, there's not much we're able to do. GW Tiger just shot, cleared my teammate. With that in mind, I've got a little bit of time here. T32 pokes, and I get an easy clear on the T32. Okay, we're doing all right. We got three premium shells left, 10 AP shells. And the SMV has decided that he's going to play aggressive. Now, the nice thing is we do have enough health to take at least two to three shells from that SMV. So right now, I'm not too worried about him. He can only take two shots from us. And if we high roll, we actually can clear him in one shot. So I'm just going to hold here. SMV is no longer fighting us. I'm going to aim it on the side of the T-28's track wheel. But again, Shell must have gone a little low and did not end up penetrating his vehicle. But that's fine. We reload. Again, we got nine AP shells left. We got the GW Tiger spotted moving in the back, so I don't need to worry about him. Because the T-28 moved up, we are finally able to at least somewhat accurately hit his weak spot in the hatch. We also notice the T-28 is stock. So at this point, we're holding here. We got the SMV in front. Are we going to be able to do anything to the SMV? Well, I don't really care about him because, again, there's not much I can do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to chill here. Again, just keep on waiting. I know the SMV can't really pen me, so I'm just going to wait. I don't even know. I guess he's just trying to hold me off. But we're just going to wait. Keep on waiting. I really want to get that T-28, but the problem is right now I can't really do that. I'm hoping the SMV shows me his lower plate. Unfortunately, our shell does not hit the hatch. But... Not too big of a problem. The SMV, again, can't pen us, so we're just slinging shells here. We have seven standard shells left, three APCR. So we still have, like, 4,000 damage potential here, but this game is quite close, as you can tell, and I don't want to just sling shells like crazy. At this point, I've realized that shooting at that hatch is just a waste of my time. So we're going to reload here again, and we got the T-28, and we've got our teammate, and I'm like, hmm, okay, well, I got two options. Right now, I can either just overpoke and pen the SMV, and that's exactly what we do, but look at that! The Arty shoots us for 472! Whoa, we love Arty. What was a fairly easy win, and me being quite healthy enough to clear the SMV, it just turned into me being 54 health. How fun. 
Well, this is no longer a very enjoyable game. Because we are so low on HP, I'm going to load premium shells to guarantee that I'm petting my opponent. We get a nice roll to the T28, and at this point, we are at 4,500 damage. Now, I'm pretty sure the Artie is going to struggle to hit me from here, but there's not really much of a choice I have, so I have to sit in this spot. We're going to aim it on the T28 again, and we finish him off. We have one gold round left, five AP left. Oh, boy. This game is getting quite tricky. Okay, well, at this point, we're just going to reload. T32 bleeds a lot of his health, and I'm trying to get that T32 to go so I can push up as well and help him. Nice. Okay, we're going to load an HE shell because of the SMV only having 48 health. We get a shell into the side of his turret, and just like that, we clear him. Wow, what a painful situation this game has thrown us here. All we have left is an M3O, and as we can see, the G Sword is last spotted off to the side of us on the lake. So I'm going to push up here. We're going to go back to loading AP because the HE is not going to help us too much. And there you go, we spot the G-Sore. This is why you always want to poke of the bush. So, we get a clear, or not a clear, but at least a nice shot into the G-Sore, breaking us the 5,000 damage barrier at this point. And, we're still somewhat healthy here. I mean, we're not dead, so at least we got that going for us. We have five shells left, but at this point, the opponents only have 870 health combined. The only thing I'm worried about is that G-Sore. I'm pretty sure that he didn't cross, because if he did, he's probably worried about being cleared by me. So we take one blind shot just in case he's still sitting in that little area there behind the bush. And now at this point, I'm like, all right, well, let's go full speed ahead. All right, so all that's left is a G-Sore and the Ardia. But I'm still worried about that G-Sore. I'm worried that he's just going to pop up. But at this point, whatever, we're just going to go for it. I'm not too scared. I'm making sure that I don't get spotted here. If I had gotten spotted, I would have stayed behind that SMV carcass. But because I don't get detected, I'm quite confident at this point that the... Uh, the G-Sword's gone, and there you go. G-Sword gets spotted all the way near our Shrek, and that is no longer a threat for me to worry about. All that I want to do is get this Artie, get some revenge for him clearing my teammates, and get some big old bonks out. I am not a big fan of Artie. That is one thing I will blatantly say every time I go up against them. So, I'm expecting him to be somewhere around here, because that's where we saw him last maneuver. And let's see, where is the Artie? Ah, ha, 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 ha. You are donezo, my guy. We're going to load an HE shell, and we're going to bonk him right in the side for 440. And just like that, we have dealt 5,642 damage with 1,360 blocked. As you can see from the post-game results, we were able to get a pretty solid result here. Not only an ace, but netting 158,000 credits, even after spending 66,000 on our ammunition. All of this was only possible because I put my tank in a single hull-down position for basically the entirety of the battle that allowed me to work the ridgeline super-duper well. And the craziest part is if my Type 63 didn't block that shot on the GW Tiger, it possibly could have been a much, much easier game to get get out some super solid results. At the end of the day, doing well in World of Tanks requires you to outsmart your opponents. The shots I fired this game were not exceptional because they didn't need to be. We were just aiming it on weak spots and for the most part sitting hull down. It was the fact that I put my tank in a position that opponents could not counter me in and all I needed to have was a little bit of support behind me and nobody could rush. The 56 TP is not what I would consider a very strong vehicle, but if played properly, it can be just as strong as the next best tier 8. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below and let me know if this helped you out at all. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.